let's become Robin Hood and let's add a custom bow to Minecraft. All right, we find ourselves back in IntelliJ once more. And in this tutorial, we're going to be adding a custom bow to Minecraft. Now, overall, this is actually fairly easy. However, there is one tiny trick that you need to know in order to add the bow properly. And that is basically how to display the item texture properly. But we're going to go through all of this. All of the code, like always, is available to you in the description below GitHub repository in an individual just as well. But let's just go into the mod items class and let's first of all copy over the grape seeds right here. And this is going to be the cow bow because why not? And this is going to be called the cow bow as well, not cow Joe. It's the cow bow. And this is going to be a bow item, which of course does not require any block. And actually, that should pretty much be all that we need. Let's just add the max count one just in case. I'm not 100% sure if we need it, but let's just add it. That does make a lot of sense. And we should also actually add the, it's not called a durability, but it is called max damage. And max damage should be, let's do 640. And then we actually don't need the max count because as soon as you add max damage to an item, of course, max count is set to one anyway. Right, and now the question is, this is actually all that we need in terms of the code for generating or rather registering the item. But how do we, well, get it to display properly? Because now we could add the JSON files and all of that. But there is a little trick and that is going to be in the util package. We're going to right click new Java class and this is going to be called the mod model predicate provider. Now this is a long name for something that's going to be kind of crazy, but we're going to just see. So where we want to go is we want to press the shift key twice and then we're going to type in a fabric model predicate and that should already be enough for model predicate provider registry to come up. We're going to open this class and you can see that this is a it has a registry method which calls something in specifically, you know, if this is all done with a mixin. The actual class that it calls is from net Minecraft client item model predicate provider registry. So we can also leave middle mouse button click on this and then it's going to open as well. And the model predicate providers or the model predicates are a way of making it so that items can change their textures, well, depending on, well, things that have changed possibly. So if we just go down, we can, for example, see that we have the bow that has the pulling predicate in there. And we have, you know, the bundle that has a filled predicate and a clock that has a time predicate. And those are, well, different ways of changing the texture of that item inside of the inventory. It is similar to the block state properties, but a little bit different. And we're gonna see how those differ in just a moment. Now, overall, this entire class is not necessarily the most important. You can, however, look at this to see some vanilla examples of some model predicates, kind of important and kind of cool. But what we wanna do is inside of this new class that we've made, we're gonna do two things. Number one, we're gonna make a public static void that's going to be a register models method right here. And then I'm going to copy over the register bow method because that is going to be crazy. So I'm just going to copy this over. I'm going to explain. So you can see that what we have, first of all, you can see down here as well, it is a quite crazy thing that we're doing here. So what is happening? We're, we're registering a new model predicate. And the model predicate you can see is this, you know, sort of method. You can see it's similar to a supplier but in this case we actually have four parameters inside of the parentheses and we're returning a float now this shouldn't be too crazy to think about the general idea here is that what we're going to do is depending on some stuff you can see we're either returning zero zero or we're returning something you know that is div divided by 20 so there is going to be a number that we're going to have and that is going to be returned if, for example, you can see if the entity is null, okay, then we're just going to return zero if the item is not active. And then we're going to say get item use left. So we basically have a percentage that this is going to be a percentage of how far the bow has been drawn, basically. And then this right here is just the pulling, whether or not we're pulling. So this is just going to be a yes, we're pulling or we're not pulling. That's the general idea. In the register mod models method, we now want to call the register bow item uh, or the register bow method. And then we're going to pass in the mod items dot count bow, and that is it. Now this register mod models method is called in the client. Incredibly important. This is only called on the client mod. Actually, mod model predicate provider dot register mod models. So that is pretty much it. Like I said, this can be kind of confusing. 
Don't worry about this too much. This is specifically for the bow. So this is as complicated as the bow has to be. If you want multiple bows, of course, what you could just do is add another register bow method just with another bow. And that would pretty much be all that you need to do there. And now we come to the JSON files, which are very interesting. Before we go into the interesting JSON files, of course, first of all, let's add the translation right here. So we don't forget this. And then it is the item model JSON files. And I say files because there are multiple ones. We're going to have four of those. One of them is the count bow, and the others are, as you can see, polling underscore zero, one, and two. And this is how the count bow looks like. So first of all, we have a certain display right here. This is just so that it displays properly inside of the player's hand in the world, right? So third person right, third person left hand, and so on and so forth. And then we point to a texture. So this is going to be the texture that it always points to. However, there is an overrides in here. And this is how this works. You know, like I said, similar to the block states, but a little bit different. Because the overrides, actually what it does is it looks for a predicate that's called pulling. Now, when we go back to the mod model uh, predicate provider right here, we can see this is the pulling predicate. And it returns a 1, as you can see, when the item is currently active and it is being used by the entity, right? So this is the two things that have to be true. And of course, the entity doesn't have to be null. It should be fairly self-explanatory in that case. And then we're going to return a one. So now we're starting to pull. This basically happens when we start right-clicking when we have the bow, right? So we're going to start drawing the bow. Then this is true. And then immediately when this becomes true, this predicate right here, so this pulling becomes one, then we're going to do and say, hey, we're going to now overwrite this model. So this entire model file, actually with this model file right here. And that is going to be the cow bow underscore pulling underscore zero. There you go. And that just points to a different texture once again. Now what's important here is that the parent is actually going to be this file right here. As you can see, tutorial mod item cow bow. That is one of the things that is very crazy and very strange, but it just has to be that case. You know, that's just something that you have to keep in mind. Once the predicate also has the pull right here. So if the bow is drawn to 65%, of its you know entire draw so to speak then we're gonna change the model to this and then if it's 90 percent drawn then we're going to change the model to this that is pretty much all that there is to it once again if you have some custom items that you want to you know have the texture change in certain ways this can of course get very complicated very fast but it is still a good introduction in this case and the bow and there's of course some more stuff showing you basically in the vanilla class highly recommend taking a look at this and then we just need to add the textures, which are, of course, also going to be four of them. And that would pretty much be all that we need to do. There you go. So this is how the bow looks like. And then, you know, you start pulling, then you start pulling a little more, and then it's fully drawn. That's the general idea. And we're just changing that via the item model JSON file, basically this one right here. And then it just points to different models with this overrides and this, these predicates. That is pretty much all that we need to add. Very important, of course, once again, that you add the register mod models method into the client mod class. Very important. So this has to be happening here. That is pretty much all that we need to do. So let's see if it works. All right, we found ourselves back in Minecraft. And as you can see, the Cotton Bowl has been successfully added to the game. And let's just see when I start right clicking, you can see the texture changes both inside of the world and in the inventory. And there you go, I can fire the bow and everything working totally fine. So just as you would expect a normal bow to behave. Really freaking cool. Right, like always, of course, all of the code and the JSON files are linked in the description below in the GitHub repository or in individual just as well. Otherwise, this is already it for this tutorial right here. I hope you found this useful and you learned something new. If you did, I would very much appreciate the like. And don't forget to subscribe for more tutorials just like this one. I also want to thank all of my lovely Patreon supporters for supporting me and this channel. It is very much appreciated. And special golden thanks go out to MC Arctic for actually supporting me with the gold block tier. And I'll see you in the next tutorial. So, yeah.